Hi everyone. Today I am doing my very first unboxing ever from Atlas Stationers based out of um, Chicago. I've never ordered anything from them yet despite collecting fountain pens for, you know, a couple of years now. So that's going to be really fun and exciting. I only got um, two things in this um, box. One is from the still ongoing, if you're watching this video in September, the yearly Sailor Don't Miss the Boat sale. I've been wanting this particular pen for a really long time now, over a year. Unfortunately, I found out afterwards, like about five months ago, it was really, really, really discounted, even more than the sale price at Endless Pen. So I guess that particular kind of pen wasn't meant to be from that store, but you know, at least I did get it. Less than retail price, it's always good to save money, and a lovely bottle of ink from Wearing Ghoul, which I currently only have one to date, and I will um, obviously be talking more about both of those after I open the box. Isn't it this really, really nice? They have a little, like, artwork thing of their real-life store, and so let's just, you know, start opening the box. And already I can see they did a really, really nice packing job, putting a lot of butcher paper around it instead of the usual, like, you know, bubble wrap and stuff like that, which is also very good to protect stuff in shipping, but isn't necessarily very good for the environment, and that, you know, really appeals to me in particular. So let's see what's going to be the first one. Oh, this is just a thing on the top. Oh, oh, oh not obviously not going to be showing that on camera. That's my, um, not receipt thing, listing what I got. Obviously, that's, you know, sensitive information. What's this? This looks like this is going to be a nice um, note. Write the night away, and I guess that AS for Atlas, I'm stationers. That's really, really nice. It's always lovely when you see a little bit of a personal touch when you order something. So they're obviously it's they like making money, of course, but it's nice to see they like personally care about their customers instead of just oh that's great you just gave us some big bucks oh here's your package instead they're you know personally acknowledging you so that's really really nice I love when you know companies take that kind of touch I wish I wish more businesses would you know be like that this is one of many reasons which why I love um, patronizing small businesses so first up is the ink which I ordered Atlas from Wearing Yule. this is a, an Atlas store exclusive and I'm really really excited to Try this. I will leave a link down below to the video on Lao at Kenshin Crafts. Go check out his channel if you don't already. He has lots of like awesome fountain pen videos and related like fountain pen um, subjects. I found out about this from him like I think a few months ago or so and he really, really highly recommended this ink particularly because, you know, wearing Yule inks, I wouldn't know from personal experience because I only have the one currently, the Black Cat, which pretty much looks black, but it's technically a very, very dark um, violet with um, shimmers in it. Apparently, wearing Yule inks tend to be a bit dry, so he was very happily surprised to discover this one particular ink runs rather wet, which is like really good. You know, some pens or papers, they don't necessarily handle dry ink so well, or maybe they do, but you know, you just don't like the properties that are showing up. You like it, you know, bold and vibrant when it's on the page instead of like really, really dry. It's And it's also a nicer, like more tactile writing experience sometimes when you're doing a wet ink, particularly if you're like really bogged by like sensory stuff that feels like the nub is scraping against the paper a little too much with a dry ink. But with a wet ink, it's like, you know, hugging the paper that's really, really nice. And it's a light blue, of course. Um, lighter inks tend to show up better in, in like, you know, broader nibs. So and the at, at, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. This is unscripted. So I decided to get one of my medium nibs, which is not currently inked to help show that off the one broad western broad nib I had was ground down into a curved architect by Kirk Spear a couple of months ago so it's not nearly it's not well it's, I wouldn't say it's not nearly as broad but it's not as broad as it used to be but I, I do think it would still you know show up really well when that pen is written dry and I can put it in that to show it off so isn't this really really nice it's a you can see lovely blue and I think pretty much all of their inks are shimmers I was watching one video a while ago and she claimed you're not supposed to shake your shimmer inks you're supposed to agitate it which is doing it like this because apparently you'll get too many bubbles if you shake it but I've seen plenty of other people like shaking their inks when they you know go to load them into the pen so I guess it's all down to your preference and I'm going to be putting this one into my um, let it snow medium nib which, because it has like lots of different uh, lovely shades of blue in it and it's also a medium nib which like really 
helps to bring out the, you know, whatever the color or the sparkle or the shimmer or the sheen better than the fine and extra fine nibs, which I was almost exclusively getting until I started getting more into mediums late last year. So I have um, filled not quite all the way this um, lovely Opus 88 eyedropper pen, Let It Snow, which is an, a gold spot exclusive. I think they might be um, sold out by now, but they might have a few still hanging around on deep discount. I had to, you know, do it um, several times because sometimes it doesn't always go the first time you eyedropper it. I just had to, you know, do the, like, screw it back on a little bit. You have you don't screw it on entirely. The nib, like, section, when you're, like, filling it, you have to let it, you know, go through the body of the pen a little bit, let it get used to it. But some, I, so I just had to hold it upside down again over the ink bottle, unscrew it a little bit, and then screw it all the way back on. Maybe I could do a full, um, video demo of like doing like filling up an eyedropper pen so this is um wearing yule yeah it's going now wearing yule yeah and I can really really see the shimmer wow it's really really showing up well in the medium nib I know it would be like even better in broad nib. wow wow I really really can see the shimmer it's really really obvious wearing yule atlas Wow, I really, really like this. This is a really, really um, beautiful blue. I really, I can't say enough. I really, really enjoy this. You know, the, I mean, I obviously saw the video and the other um, samples and stuff on the Atlas store, but in person, it just looks so much prettier. I, maybe that light lamp is a little bit, yeah, I think that's a little bit more accurate, but uh, wow, it really, really looks nice. I highly recommend this to you guys if you like um, blue. And again, like larger nibs do tend to make lighter colors and particularly shimmer inks show up better. So wow, I really, really highly recommend this. And I can already feel this is a very wet ink, not dry so much like the black cat ink is. And now I will unbox the sailor pen and do a writing demo with that. I decided to use the a diamine on um, seven deadly sins on um, lust ink because like blue is one of the colors and I really really enjoy this particular ink and so this is a sailor pen which I've been wanting for over a year now and I kind of reside myself okay it is a bit pricey obviously most of their pens are pricey and they seem to be selling out at a lot of places so maybe it's not meant to be even though I really really like the color combos and just keep coming back and thinking about it when I see it available on other sites so I guess it really really was meant to be and I got this in a medium nib. My current other sailor is a broad nib, which I really enjoy, and I have one which will be coming in probably late October, early November, because it's coming from England with the ink vent calendar. That one is a fine nib, so I'm going to have, you know, like three major nib sizes in sailor, and, you know, see which one I like the best. This is the from their pillow book series, Spring Sky, which has a really lovely blue purplish body and a bright um, dark pink um not nib, what a cap, that's, I'm blanking on the words. Oh, that looks really, really nice. I've been wanting this for so long. Wow, it's, I'm going to pull it out. Yeah, this, obviously the colors are going to be even brighter when I, you know, take it out of um, this thing. Let me see, is it going to come out that way, or oh, I guess I have to cut it open. This really, really looks absolutely beautiful, and the pink cap looks even darker pink in person. Maybe this is because of, you know, the lighting of where I have to, you know, work from, but it really, really looks beautiful. And the the finial is also that same, like, beautiful color. I wouldn't describe this as, like, blue so much, more of a, it really, really is a lovely like, spring sky color, more of, like, a purpley blue or a bluish purple, but it definitely looks more purple than blue. Well, this was, wow, really, really worth the wait. Obviously, I got it in the Pro Gear Slim because that's much, um, cheaper, relatively speaking, than the regular Pro Gear, but I do plan at some point to get a Pro Gear if the price is right, just because, you know, it's a little bit bigger and um, thicker, and just to have the different kind of writing experience, and I like the, the gold trim that's really, really, really pretty. Let's see what it looks like. The, ooh, it's a light. It's a yellow gold. My personal favorite type of gold is um, white gold and um, rose gold, but, you know, yellow gold, there's nothing wrong with that, and that's the medium nib. I'm sorry, this is totally backwards. I still need to invest in some above, like a tripod enabling me to film from above like everyone else. But, you know, I need more of an active um, subscriber base audience, like leaving comments and such. So I'll know, you know, that'll be a worthwhile 
investment because, you know, lots of people like watching my videos and liking my content and stuff so I can, you know, step my game up. It's really, really nice. And you can see the nib from that it looks really, really, really lovely. And they also all come with a, a bookmark. You can see the lovely, um, you know, sorry, it's upside down color splotches like that. That really appeals to me as an artist. And of course, the the cartridges and the usual like, you know, warranty information. Oh, and then the converter is inside there. So I'm going to fill it up with um, lust and see how it writes with a medium nib. So this is going to be the writing sample with um, lust. Ooh, I like that line width. Oh, that's a really nice line width. Really nice. So Pro Gear Slim. And I love, love the color. And it's showing up really well. And this is as well with the Sheening Pro Gear Slim um, Spring Sky Pillow. Yeah, and I can hear that nice feedback, but it's not bothering me. It's just like a nice um, sharpened pencil gliding across, but obviously, well, not from personal experience. I don't know this yet, but with the smaller and smaller sizes with the Sailor, it feels or it sounds even, you know, sharper and more feedbacky. but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I really, really like how this um, feels and writes. I've been wanting this for so, so long. I'm so glad I finally got it. It looks a little bit better with the light off of it. Yeah, you can really appreciate the purple and the pink. They go together so, so well. And like, as I've mentioned in a bunch of previous videos, I wasn't really into pink so much until maybe 15 or so years ago. I always stereotyped it. Oh, it's a girly color. I don't want to be associated with like stereotypically girly stuff like that, even though many people would say like purple is also a very stereotypically girly color, but I've been so always been so proud of being like very like, tomboyish and gender defiant. I don't like necessarily present in such a non-stereotypically feminine way, but you know, the things I'm interested in, like the way my like brain works, like things like that, my blunt way of speaking, those aren't really like stereotypically feminine. They're more guy-like, which I've always taken pride in, but there's nothing wrong with uh, liking the color pink. You know, colors are for everybody don't like feel like oh because I'm like very tomboyish I can only like certain colors or because oh I'm a macho man I can't like these colors you know like what you like who cares what other people think it's only about what you like and I really really do enjoy the color combination of this pen I'm going to have you know so much um fun writing with it and the one that that's going to be coming in um late October or early November the fine it's a aubergine from cold pens that's a store exclusive they had and that was also on a sale and I really like the gold trim and the extra purple on the top I really I can't say enough I really really enjoy this glad I decided to finally get it for the sale a lot of the other websites that had this it was only in like music by the time I got around to it or by the time the sale started so finally I found it at Atlas for something that wasn't music that was like much much a much different nib the kind of nib I enjoy more because like music sounds like it looks like a cool nib but I'm not necessarily sure that would be the kind of thing I would realistically use to write on a regular basis maybe like holiday and birthday cards or artwork or something like that but again that's not something I would be doing on a regular basis to feel like oh I really really want something that writes like a double broad all the time I want you know I like fines, extra fines and mediums and like Japanese broads and like certain broads for like certain things. But, you know, generally I don't like pens that write nearly as large as the music nib. Thank you very much for watching all the way through to the end. Um, please um, leave me a comment letting me know, have you used either of these like products, either this particular pen or do you like sailors in general? What preference do you have? Like Pro Gear Slim versus regular pro gear or the king of pens which is like super super expensive even during the yearly don't miss the boat sale or have you used the atlas ink from wearing Gule yet have you seen it would you be interested in using it do you have other wearing Gule inks what do you think of them in general do you like this color combo what are your favorite sailors in your own personal collection or that you have in mind or that you would like for them to possibly do at some point in future i know a lot of people like laugh and joke in the fountain pen community oh they're just constantly using different color combinations or like taking the cap and making that the color of the body and like switching it around and stuff but they do really have 
high quality products and particularly the gold nib. So this is a really, really like quality thing. I do highly recommend them and I, I really, really enjoy this ink. I'm gonna have so much fun writing with it and maybe I'll start getting into some more. I'm wearing Yule inks if I hear, you know, they're wetter inks and I really, really enjoy the color. So again, a thank yous guys very much for watching. Um, for, don't forget to leave a comment. I really enjoy having conversations with these guys and I will see you very soon. Bye.